Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this beautiful video, welcome to the YouTube channel of the Bitcoin family. For the newcomers, my name is Didi Taihutu. Yes, I am the father of the family that three and a half years ago sold literally everything they owned, their house, their companies, their cars, their toys, went all into Bitcoin and started traveling the world. Four documentaries were made about this crazy step we took in life, and now we are still traveling the world, coming to you guys from Alicante in Spain. In today's video, I'm mainly focusing on Bitcoins because we saw a huge drop from 12K to 10K, and I don't want you guys to freak out. So I'm going to share some amazing information some amazing charts, show you guys what happened in 2012, what happened in 2016, and what is happening now with the Bitcoin price, because I wanna give you a very relaxing weekend. I don't want you guys to freak out at the moment, but I want you guys to zoom out. Also talking to you guys about stable coins, because we can see a trend talking about a mining war, which I don't wanna call a mining war, because I think the war is between two parties, and guys, going to talk about Brazil because they want to embrace the central bank's digital currencies. Enjoy today's video because it's packed with cool information, guys. What the fuck did just happen? How can we fall from 12K all the way down to 10K? And we are around 10K at the moment. I think we are around 10,200 US dollar per Bitcoin. Did I expect this to happen? No, I need to be honest. I didn't expect a drop tilt this low. Um, even people are expecting a drop a little bit lower to fill the CME gap. That one is around 9,700 US dollar. So I am going to update you today in a short video about what I think that could happen to Bitcoin next. First, some education about the CME gap, because we have been talking about the CME gap many times, and I think many of you don't even know what it is and how it was created, the CME gap. So I'm going to educate you about this, then talk about the Bitcoin price and show you some amazing charts that will de-stress you and that will give you a very relaxed feeling for this upcoming weekend because this upcoming weekend you need to zoom out on the charts and you need to zoom in at life because you need to enjoy every single minute of the day the next weekend and then monday take a look again at the bitcoin charts cme stands for chicago mercantile exchange yes the cme is an exchange and what happens when we create a cme gap this happens when the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is closed, so not opening hours. Yes, these exchanges do close, not like Bitcoin exchanges. So when that one is closed and there is an aggressive move in Bitcoin, then we create a CME gap. So that means that these people are sleeping, the exchange is closed, Bitcoin moves up $1,000 or $500, then these guys wake up, they open the exchange, and they see that the Bitcoin price made a jump of $500. US And then you get a gap. And this is what they call a CME gap. And it is kind of rule that people believe that we need to fill these gaps. So now there is one gap left around $9,700, US as you can see on this chart. Bam, a gap chart. <laughs> on this gap chart you can see the circles these are the gaps in the past if you look to the left and these gaps have been filled later a gap doesn't need to be filled right away or the same month or the same week it can also be filled like seven months later or two months later or even a year later now a lot of people expect that this drop in bitcoin is going to fill this CME gap around 9,700 US dollar, which would be a very healthy thing for Bitcoin. And which would also mean that if we fill this gap, that we would see a bounce again to the levels above 10K and very soon again to 12K. But on the other hand, maybe the CME gap is not the reason that Bitcoin dropped with more than 20%. Maybe it is the upcoming mining war. I have talked to you guys about that many times, that there was a mining war coming. Because these miners, 
they are not all agreeing with each other. Some of the miners want to sell their bitcoins, they want to keep bitcoin around this price. And the rest of the miners, they want to see bitcoin increasing in price. Why would you say? What is the difference for these miners? I'm going to explain to you this in a very simple five way. Because if you look at this chart, bam, on this chart you can see that this indeed could have influenced the Bitcoin price. Because the miners outflows were tremendously exactly at the moment of the dip of the Bitcoin price. There was more than 80 million US dollar outflows from the pools, from the Bitcoin mining pools. That's about 1650 bitcoins, 1650 bitcoins that float out the mining pools. And yes, of course, that can have influence on the Bitcoin price. Like you can see on this chart, bam, on this chart you can see that the pool and pool sold about 640 of their bitcoins. You can also see that the slush pool sold about 590 of their bitcoins. And then we have this How BTC pool that one sold 400 of their bitcoins. So in total, that's already 1600 bitcoins being sold. A total value of $18 million from the miners. But why are they selling their bitcoins? Like any other business, the mining business is a highly competitive business. Miners are competing with each other. And there are a lot of miners in this industry that already are making profit. They also installed all their machines, they have everything up and running, they have a positive return on investment which means they are making profit every month, which means they are on track with earning back their investments in these huge mining rigs and systems, etc. So these miners are doing really good. They don't want new miners to enter the market. Because if new miners enter the market, they get more competition. And when these old miners that are making profit get more competition, their profit could decrease. So they don't want new miners into the market. So what can they do to withhold other miners entering this market, new miners entering this market? The only thing that the current profitable miners can do to hold these new miners for entering the market is keeping the BTC price low. Because if the Bitcoin price is around 10, 12, 13K, it is not easy for a new miner to enter the market because at the beginning they won't be profitable. They make a huge investment and then the return on investment for these new miners, this period of time will be too long. If Bitcoin will go into a bull run, 20K, 30K higher, it will be pretty easy for new miners to enter the market as the mined Bitcoins they are making will increase their return investment or decrease the return investment period. Because then, if they start mining during the bull run, they will be making huge profits because every Bitcoin they mine is more valuable. So this could be a mining war and this could be the reason why a few huge centralized Chinese miners are now stopping the Bitcoin price from going up because they don't want to have new mining companies in this industry. I think it's a very important thing to watch out for and I'm very happy that there are companies like Iran and Pakistan and all these countries we already talked about that are now officially starting mining by using power plants so that the competition in this whole mining industry will average out across all countries in this world. It can't stay like this that China has a 60 plus percentage dominance in the mining industry. We need to decentralize this mining industry. So more countries should start to mine bitcoins and then again we decentralize the whole mining landscape and then with that again we have a chance that bitcoin will more naturally evolve in price. If you don't understand what I'm saying please comment below. I have seen some very intelligent comments below the videos and I'm very thankful for this because guys, we need to educate each other and it's perfect that you're commenting and perfect that you criticize me because I don't know everything. And if you criticize me or make a healthy discussion below my videos, this will not only educate me, but will also educate the others and maybe educate yourself because then others can reply to you and can give you another insight into the things you're commenting. So thank you for all these comments. Thank you for all the discussions. I love them. Please continue doing this.
So let me know below this video what do you think about this whole mining stuff that I just explained to you guys. Do you think there's a truth in what I just told? Or do you think, nah Didi, all these miners don't have any influence on these prices as since the halving it's not the miners that have the biggest outflow in bitcoins but it is the exchanges that have the biggest outflow in bitcoins this i also talked about in many videos already a few weeks ago the exchanges took over from the miners when it comes to outflow in bitcoins so the amount of bitcoins that exchanges are making in fees these combined fees are higher than the daily amount of mined bitcoins so exchanges have a bigger outflow of bitcoins into the market than the miners at the moment but let me know in the comments what you think but now let's talk about bitcoin guys because i'm very much looking forward to share these charts with you guys so you understand what is happening we covered now why we saw the bitcoin dip now we are going to cover what is going to be next for bitcoin let's take a look first at this chart bam I love this chart as well. Yesterday, two beautiful charts with an amazing view. If you didn't see yesterday's video, do check it because it's not only information about Bitcoin, but also about blockchain, but also about life. But again, this chart is beautiful. It is a follow-up chart of the chart I shared yesterday with you guys, because this is the stock to flow chart from plan B. But then in a zoomed in way, because in this chart, you can see this line coming up and we will call it a trend line. So you can see all the dots curling up and you see this trend line below it this trend line is the minus 38 percent price trend line so that means that this line is 38 percent lower than the bitcoin price in that stock to flow chart as you can see in the previous bull run we touched this line two times and by touching this line two times we didn't break the stock to flow chart the stock to flow chart was still valid and now in this bull run we haven't touched this line once as you can see the line is still below all the beautiful colorful dots the red dots at the moment that need to go into orange and yellow in the future <laughs> but we are still moving above this line so if we would copy what happened in the last bull run we can touch this minus 38 percent line two times before we see a new all-time high so don't freak out but zoom out exactly that is what i tell you every day again don't freak out but zoom out also guys when we take a look at this chart bam this is a weekly chart every candle is a week you can see in this weekly chart that there was a huge trend line coming down from the all-time high to this point now where we are we broke this trend line somewhere in august beginning of august i think it was and then we broke this trend line and now we came back to this trend line like we always say support and resistance so this trend line has a formed a resistance a multi-year resistance that we broke this year august and now we are retesting this trend line check this chart what is the level that we should be retesting if we would be retesting this trend line exactly around 10,500 us dollar and that is exactly what we just did and that is exactly what we're seeing now on the chart that bitcoin is pulling back again to above this trend line so we broke the trend line we came down we are testing this trend line and when we close the weekly candle so this sunday when we close this candle above this trend line the retest of this downward trend line is a valid retest and we could bounce off this trend line up again so if you zoom out to the charts, these things will be more clear. And to top it up even more, to give you an even more positive feeling and even a more happy feeling to go into this beautiful weekend, let's take a look at these charts. I saw these charts at the Crypto Crew University channel. I love to follow that channel as well because I think Steve has a beautiful view on the charts. So that's why I share these charts of Steve as well now and then, because I want to share multiple opinions of different traders in this industry so you can see that not everybody is agreeing and that many scenarios are possible and sometimes i will also share my view on the charts and my charts as you have seen in the last couple of videos but i love to share other people's charts as well because i am not the only one that knows something about these charts and i don't even pretend to be the one that knows best so let's take a look at this chart bam it's a weekly chart every candle is a week and i'm showing this chart. i'm sharing this chart so you can see 
that the 12k level is a very important level because we have only closed five weekly candles above this 12k level and that was back in 2017-18 so this 12k resistance line is a huge line of resistance as we have only closed five candles above that one just to show you how important this 12k level is on this weekly chart guys you can also see this huge triangle i already have shared many times with you guys you see the 12k line that one is the top line and you see the trend line coming up together with this upcoming trend line you can see we are forming this ascending triangle it will in the most cases break out to the upside so now we again reach the top of this triangle and you can see we could go to the bottom of this triangle and this is the uptrend line that would be at the moment around pff, i think 7500 us dollar so even if we would fall back to 7500 us dollar at the moment i would still be bullish and positive because in the weekly chart we would still see a higher low than the previous low after the bottom we went to 12k we even peaked to 14k then we came all the way back to this trend line again around 6k and now we go, went up again around to 12k and now what is happening are we going to break this line the 12k or are we going down again to this trend line that could be around 7k or 8k depending on how many weeks it will take a weekly chart so it is not going to happen in a day let's take a look to the left if you look to the left from the bottom in 2018 to the top in 2019 took about 28 weeks and then from the top of 2019 around this 14k to the bottom of 2020 took about 37 weeks and now from the bottom of 2020 till again this 12k region we are just testing took about 26 weeks so that's a lot of weeks 26 weeks guys this is uh, six and a half month so before we could test this upcoming trend line again around 7k 8k depending on how many candles we would form that can take a long time i still believe that we are not going to do this i still believe we are going to go up until i see a lower low on the daily candles i am not a believer that we are changing trend because the weekly candles so show you what is happening in the big picture the monthly candles are also showing this and the daily candles are showing now if we are going to reverse trend or not so if we keep above this 10,500 level closing the daily candles above this i don't see that we're reversing the trend i still see that the uptrend is still valid and we are still going up from here if you are going to create lower lows on this daily chart and lower highs on this daily chart that will be the indicator for me that we just reverse the trend and that could be that also in the weekly will we reverse the trend but then even if you zoom out to the weekly we need to create a lower low on the weekly for me to get bearish again as long we are creating higher lows on the weekly so that means even 7500 is a higher low even if we close a higher low at 7500 i see it still as a bull trend because i always zoom out to the charts as an investor it requires me to zoom out on charts i am not a day trader full time i'm an investor and in the second place i'm a day trader because i love the game of day trading now and then during these runs up you can make huge kick ass profits in all these altcoins but I only trade with 30% of my capital, 70% I hodl, hodl, 70% and 30% I play with. And the second thing on this chart which is very important is this HV. We have already been forming a downtrend since I think 2013 top somewhere. And this HV level of 81 is very important. Because if you look to the left, we touched this 81 level of the HV two times. And every time we touch this 81 level, we saw up the bull runs. This was the 2014 bull run. This was the 2016 bull run. Yes, the 2016 bull run ended in 2018, but it started in 2016, exactly after we touched this 81 level in the HV. And then after that, we crossed the all time high of the previous bull run. Then we saw the huge steep incline, like I showed you yesterday on the charts. So if we are going to surpass the 20K of this previous bull run, that will indicate we get this huge run up again to 50K, 100K, whatever you might believe. So this HV is a crucial thing, crucial indicator, crucial tool to be looking at. 
we are now around 127. So we can dip even more. The strange thing is that if you look at this trend line that, come down, that came downwards, we broke this HV trend line this year, like a month ago. So we are now also retesting this trend line. So the question is now, will we bounce from this HV trend line or will we go to this 81 level? And that will be for me another confirmation to buy some more Bitcoin in the dip because this bull run is going to happen either way. I don't think that the miners can stop this bull run as the exchanges at the moment have the overhand and outflow of Bitcoins. So I think the exchanges will want to see a bull run because if exchanges see a bull run, they will see an increase on trading of their exchanges and the more people trade on their exchanges, the more money they make. It's a business model for exchanges, so I wouldn't refer to it as the minor war. Maybe we will see a Bitcoin miner versus exchanges war. Because I think exchanges want Bitcoin to go up. And if miners want Bitcoin to go down, it's all about the outflows of Bitcoin. So we need to start to follow the money, as they say in the normal world. So we need to start to follow the Bitcoins and the US dollar teeters. Because when these exchanges sell or when these miners sell their Bitcoins or the exchanges sell their Bitcoins, they will sell them into US dollar teeter. And so we, if we start to track this US dollar teeter, we can see what will happen in the price in the days after. My opinion, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just a dude walking around in Spain, having a beautiful life and making some profits and trading here and there. How can you see that these US dollars uh, will show us the way? Because you can see that these stable coins have been increasing tremendously. I think we saw an increase of 100 million US dollar in stable currencies per day in the month of August. I'm talking about the BUSD, the US dollar teeter, the HUSD, the DAI, the PAX, the USD, USDC, all these stable currencies combined are increasing with 100 million US dollar a day. We can track the stable coins and then we can see in combination with the minor outflows, with the exchange outflows, what is going to happen to the price. Believe me, these exchanges, they don't want to go bankrupt, so they keep they need to keep us trading. And believe me, these miners, they don't want to go bankrupt, so they need to keep the Bitcoin price above the 10k level to stay profitable. Because if this Bitcoin price will drop below this 10k level to 9 or 8k, also these huge miners that are now that now are profitable will not be profitable again and they will start to lose money. So they won't let Bitcoin drop too far. And then one more short news, because Brazil now announced that they are going to look into the CBDC, the central bank's digital currency, because they think that it could be a good add-on to the PIX system they are creating in Brazil. That the PIX system in Brazil is kind of a competition um, to the DLT systems we are referring to in the blockchain world and the Bitcoin world. The, but the Brazilian government says we need to have this digital currency and to have a digital currency we need a digital currency groundwork and they believe this PIX system is going to provide them instead of for example the XRP um, system that we have in the blockchain industry. So Brazil is going to combine the SPICs with the CBDC currencies in the, to in the future. So let's see where this will evolve. I, I believe that these blockchain projects we see and the stable currencies are way better and stronger than the SPIC system in Brazil. So I don't think other countries will follow Brazil's uh, example. I do think other countries will uh, embrace these digital currencies. All these countries will step into these centralized digital crypto coins as they refer to them because they need to do this to save the world from another huge crash that we are going to see in the next couple of months because we cannot keep printing this money the way they are doing at the moment. So they need to figure out a new way also into this new monetary system and, and they will also use this digital currency revolution, but then again in a very centralized way. So I will keep educating you guys on the difference between a centralized digital crypto coin and a decentralized digital crypto coin like Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum or Verge or Dash or many other of these cryptos. You need to prefer all these cryptos above the central bank's digital currencies. That was all the information for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your communities, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell. And if you can't hit the notification bell, you need to 
unsubscribe and subscribe again and then you will be able to hit the notification bell and leave a comment because I love to respond to your comments. I want to end the video with wishing you an amazing weekend and please remember for this weekend to zoom out on the charts and on the cryptos and to zoom in at life try to enjoy every single minute of this day this weekend because that is exactly what makes life worth living and Monday you open your charts again and hopefully we can see some more positive movement and some more green candles on Monday again enjoy your weekend thanks for watching and hopefully see you tomorrow again bye